We welcome you to our worship service this morning. We hope all of you are doing well. And again, we thank you for worshiping with us. We will have an in-person worship at 11 o'clock here in our sanctuary today. And if you can come and join us for that, we certainly would be happy to see you. Also today, again, we are receiving the uh, offering for our uh, our reconciliation offering for the Disciples Mission Fund. Uh, we hope that if you've not uh, had an opportunity to give, that you will be able to give today uh, very generously. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship this morning is from Matthew, the chapter 8, verse 11. I tell you, Many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Our hymn of praise is number 420. I come with joy, a child of God.
would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer. Lord, we come to you with our brokenness and our sin. Forgive us. Help us to love as you have loved and welcome each other as you have welcomed us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. And they said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority am I, do I doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and he said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we gather here today and lift our hearts to you with praise and with thanksgiving. On this World Communion Sunday, we are mindful of how you have blessed the whole world with your love. We are mindful that you have drawn us together into one kingdom and you have called us to serve you our one and only Lord. We pray that by the presence and power of your Holy Spirit, we will be strengthened against temptation. We pray that you will forgive us of our sins. We pray that you will surround us with your love, transform us by that love, and use us as instruments through which your love and salvation will be made known to the world. We thank you for the many gifts of life you've given to us, the gift of the love of family and friends, Christian brothers and sisters. 
We thank you for the gift of a beautiful world, for the gift of all the things that sustain us in this life. We thank you for the opportunities you give us to serve and glorify you. Help us to recognize those opportunities. Help us to be eager to do whatever would bring honor and glory to you. We pray this day for those who are sick, for those who are experiencing weakness, those who are experiencing pain, those who are just realizing that their bodies are wearing down. We pray that you will surround them with your love, that you will touch them and let them know the joy of your presence even in the midst of the worst of circumstances. We pray that your healing power will bless each one in accordance with your will. We pray that all will be strengthened, that we might serve and glorify you. We pray also for those who have lost loved ones, that abiding pain that goes with people for day after day and year after year, help them deal with their griefs, strengthen and comfort them by your love and presence and by the love and presence of your people. We pray this day that you will bless this congregation and your church everywhere. Be with us as your disciples that we might bear witness to your love and saving power in our communities and everywhere that we go. May you raise up people in every part of the world so that the whole world will come to know that you have loved all of us with an everlasting love, that they will know that you have offered to all of us your salvation, that it is your desire to gather us all into your arms, into your presence, into your kingdom. Father, we pray this day for our nation and all nations, that we might learn to work together, that we might learn to lift one another up, that we might learn to help those who are in need, that we might learn to live together in peace. Search all of our hearts. You know our needs better than we know them ourselves. We ask that you fulfill those needs in accordance with your will. And we pray that you will draw us closer to you, that we will grow in our knowledge of you and in our faith. We pray that you will use us in every way possible as instruments of your love and blessing. And now, Lord, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to the hearing of your word and to the transforming power of your Holy Spirit and love. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our scripture text this morning comes from, again, from Paul's letter to the Philippians. This time from chapter 2, which follows immediately after our scripture we had last Sunday. It begins in verse 1 and goes through verse 13. Listen for the word of the Lord. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you 
that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it, it, it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. World Communion Sunday. It is a Sunday which we as disciples of Jesus are made even more mindful that when we come to the table of the Lord, we are being joined by a host of other people, people who do not look exactly like we look, people who have values, some values in the world that are different than ours, or maybe I shouldn't say values, maybe I should say who have a different culture than our culture. We come to the table on this day and are especially mindful that our Lord has tore down the dividing walls that are between us and that by the power of his love and his spirit, we are made one with all his people everywhere and throughout all ages of time. At this table, we become aware that everyone is welcome. Everyone is equally welcome. And that in a world that is so divided, in a time when people are always pointing out our differences, it is a wonderful thing to come to a table where we unite around something. And when we come to this table, we unite not around something, but around someone, around the one who loved us with his very life, around the one who conquered death and came and was present with us, is present with us even now. And we unite around his love. At this table, all indeed are welcome. At this table, those who crucified our Lord have been given forgiveness and have been received. At this table, it matters not whether you are capitalist or communist, you are equally welcomed. At this table, it matters not what your skin color is, what your nationality is. It matters not what your culture is. You are one who is created and loved by God, and you are equally welcomed. 
at this table, whether you are gay or straight or something else, you are equally welcomed. At this table, it doesn't matter if you are rich or poor, young or old. It doesn't matter if you are healthy or unhealthy in body. You are equally welcomed. At this table, sinners find welcome. And all of us are sinners. In many ways, your sin may be different than my sin, and my sin different from their sin, and their sin different from all of our sins. But sinners find welcome at this table find forgiveness at this table, not because we've earned it, but because of the Lord's grace and love. At this table, it doesn't matter if you are a long-time citizen and patriot or if you are a refugee or an immigrant, legal or illegal, you find equal welcome. Would that we could learn this in our daily lives and in our national lives and international lives. Our scripture text today is a continuation of the text from last Sunday. Last Sunday, Paul had talked to the Philippians, had let them know that he was in a situation he didn't know whether he was going to come out alive or not. But he assured them that regardless of whether he lived or died, he would be with Christ. If he lived, Christ would be with him. He would continue his work for Christ. It would be fruitful labor for him. If he died, he would be with the Lord, and he knew that that would be wonderful. So either way, he would be with the Lord, the Lord would be with him. In life, in death, he would be with the Lord. And he was letting the Philippians know that the same thing was true with them. See, they were going through a terrible time as well. They were being persecuted. They were different from the culture that surrounded them now that they had come to to know that Christ is Lord and not Caesar that Christ is Lord and not those who are governing in your local town or city, that Christ is Lord rather than the pagan gods that their neighbors worshipped. They were suffering from persecution and Paul was letting them know that even as everything was going to be fine with him, whatever happened because he would be with the Lord and the Lord would be with him, The same was true with the Philippian church. Paul knew that whether he was present or absent, the Lord was going to be with that church. And that was what really mattered. And then he says something that is kind of like someone who might not be able to see them again, giving a final word of advice Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Now, we did not talk last week about what that meant. But this week, our text tells us what that means. He says in in his own words some of this. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Now when he said be of full accord and of one mind, he didn't mean that we all would have the same opinions. He didn't mean that we would think alike in everything. What he did mean was 
that we could be united around the love of Christ, the one who loved us with his very life. We could be united in recognizing his love and in being transformed by that love so that we are empowered to love him. And if we are empowered to love him, we are also empowered by his love to love one another. Doesn't mean that everyone's going to be exactly alike. But it means that all of us will share the same ambition. Maybe ambition is not the right word, but the same desire to serve and glorify Christ. To make our Lord pleased with us. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Now, in his own words, Paul was letting us know that the way of Christ is different from the way of the world. And you and I are to follow Christ. If we love Christ, if we claim to be his disciples, if we desire to, to be his disciple, then surely we will follow him. And our aim is to become more and more like him. And this is not the way of the world. These things that Paul is telling the Philippians they need to do are the things that Christ has done. The way that Christ lived is the way that you and I should live. The values that Christ upheld are the values that you and I should uphold. If we are fully transformed by his love, we are to become more and more like him. And that, contrary to what a lot of people think, a lot of people think that the ways of the world are, are Christian values, but that's not true. Christ has taught us a way that is different from the way of the world. Love sharing in spirit, compassion, sympathy. Being in full accord. Nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Humility. Now they all sound like good words to us, but in the world around us, how do people live? In the world around us, what do people champion? In the world around us, I can tell you that people look out for self, look out for number one. In the world around us, people believe in being aggressive and taking what you want. In the world around us, they believe in law and swift retribution and punishment if you break those laws. They don't believe in deep compassion and sympathy. In the world around us, you work for what you want, you struggle. You fight. You assert yourself to have your own way. We see it all around us. We see those who will do anything to get their way, regardless of what it costs everybody else. We see it in our Congress. But the way of Christ is a way of love, a way of compassion, a way of sympathy, a way of understanding. The way of Christ is a way of self-sacrifice, of giving up your own comforts for the sake of others. 
And we can understand that. A good parent and a child, parents sacrifice, give up for their child, their children, more than they ever dreamed they would for anyone because they love them. And that is what Christ is calling us to. That is what Christ has demonstrated for us in his own life. But a lot of people don't see that. They believe in hard line. They believe in retribution and punishment. They believe in asserting their own way. What would happen if the President of the United States went in the midst of other leaders of other countries and humbled himself and thereby humbling our own nation and recognizing that other nations are as good or better than we are? What a cry would go up from this country because we believe in someone going in and taking charge, taking the bull by the horns and making sure everything goes according to the way we want it to go. That's not the way of Christ. And then Paul inserts into his letter this ancient hymn of the church, the Christ hymn we sometimes call it. And he introduces it by saying this, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Remember, disciples desire to become like our Lord. Who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. The eternal Son of God gave up his privileged position. The eternal Son of God did not think he should exploit his relationship with the Father. The eternal Son of God was willing to humble himself and come among us in human likeness. He was willing to give up everything for us, to teach us what God is like, to show us God's love, to show us how God is willing to go the ultimate distance in order to claim us as his own. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Now, Jesus was different from many. Now, a lot of soldiers... Law enforcement officers have given up their lives for the sake of others. And some have done so knowing that they were about to do so and trying to protect someone else. But most gave up their lives, lost their lives because they could do nothing different. Jesus had a choice. Jesus could have lashed out against us when we condemned him, when we decided to put him to death. He, being the Son of God, having the power of God with him, he could have stricken us to terrible pain or even death. But he loved us so much he would not do that. He became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, an excruciating, painful death. Now, how far are we willing to go for those that we love? 
Well, it depends on how much we love them. For your children, you'll go a long ways. For your children, you probably would even be willing to die in order to save their lives. How far you're willing to go, how much pain you're willing to endure depends on how strong your love is. And our Lord's love was the strongest we've ever seen or ever will see because he knew what he was getting into. He knew the excruciating pain he would endure. He knew that he would taste death. And yet, for all of us, he did that anyway. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God vindicated Jesus. We condemned him crucified him, but he, God, vindicated him in his resurrection. God was saying to the world the things that Jesus taught are correct. He was saying to the world the way that Jesus lived is correct. It was pleasing in my sight. The way that Jesus taught us that we should live is what God wants us to do. He vindicated him. And in coming back to us, we see the length and depth and breadth of God's love to the point that we're able to see it, and that love goes even more than what we're able to see. That he would be willing to forgive, love and forgive and receive all of us. So on this World Communion Sunday, he welcomes sinners. And all of us are sinners. All of us are the reason he suffered on a cross. And yet he has forgiven us and still loves us. And if we recognize that love and allow that love to begin to work in us, if we allow his love to begin transforming us, then our way of life is to be like his way of life. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And that kind of life is a life of love and forgiveness, a life of welcome to others. At this table, the Lord has welcomed us. May we learn to welcome one another. May we learn to live as Christ lived, and show love and grace and compassion and mercy even to our enemies, even to those who would hurt us so that others might see the love of Christ in us and learn of the love of God for all people and the saving power of God that is extended to all who will receive it. Paul goes on to say, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you. In other words, it's not them who are working through their salvation, it is God. He is at work in them, transforming them so that they can share God's love with others, even in the midst 
of a city full of enemies, a city full of people who are persecuting them, they can love that city. They can show God's grace and mercy and compassion even toward their enemies, toward those who would hurt them. May we all learn by God's love to live as our Lord has lived. It is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The Lord has loved us. He receives us. May we allow his work to be accomplished in us. Thanks be to God.
At this table, we have a foretaste of the kingdom of God. At this table, as we break the bread and drink from the cup and remember our Lord giving his body and blood because of his love for us, at this table, as we partake and remember that the living Lord is with us, having received us, forgiven us, and is now nourishing us and embracing us. At this table, in humility, we remember that none of us have earned a spot here. We remember that we are no better than anyone else anywhere else in the world, that God has welcomed them all to this table. And at this table, His Spirit binds us to Him, to one another, and to all His people in the world and throughout ages of time. May we be mindful that we are a part of a great multitude that no man can count who are worshiping and praising God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for welcoming us to this table. We thank you for this bread and this cup. We thank you for the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of all, we thank you for his love that caused him to do, endure all that pain and suffering for our sakes, for his love that forgives us even for our horrible deed against him. We thank you that we have been welcomed. Help us to welcome one another. Draw us together that we might be one voice giving praise and glory and honor to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you. And be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, for welcoming us to your table, we give you thanks. For your love and your Holy Spirit that works in us, we give you thanks. May the presence and power of your Spirit and love make us able to live in a manner worthy of your gospel. May the Spirit and love abide in us and work through us that we might learn to love one another 
even as you have loved us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.